Oh, all right, hey guys, we're back. Hole number uh, nine here again. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen quite a few of these. Uh, this is a redesigned hole. And uh, one of the things that we want to keep in mind, um, well, first off, you know, you can kind of back off on your ball. Uh, it's essentially assumed that we're going to be playing a, kind of a four-shot hole here. So you're going to see me, you know, I'm going to play this more like a Thor 5 for you guys. Um, similarly, if you had a Thor 4, you could do almost exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, you know, you always want to kind of overplay this wind. I am going to go full here. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of looking about five rings down, um, which is kind of like kind of close to a ring and a quarter per ring, which is much lower than the, uh, you know, accepted value uh, based off Thor's accuracy of 64, which is 1.7 per ring. But I want you to keep in mind, especially on down wind shots, but even on side wind when we go into max power there, you know, you're going to need to, you know, at least have, you know, 1.3, 1.4 as your ring adjustment um, because of the fact of that extra power, not to mention going into a katana ball, for example. It's going to be extra air time, which means you need to adjust more rings. And I usually go visually about 20 extra percent to account for that. So, you know, however you need to think about it, just make sure that you're doing about a 20 percent extra adjustment. It's basically equivalent to saying, you know, putting on an extra ring for no reason. So if I would usually go four, I'd just go five. <clears throat> but you can see that we position it into the first fairway here. Uh, and uh, what we're going to try to do is set up a second shot that's going to go up towards the bunker. Now, I love winds like that because there's no way that I can get it to that bunker no matter what I do. So I can get as aggressive or not aggressive as I want here, and we will be perfectly fine. So, you know, my max ring adjustments would be basically pushing six rings. You're gonna see me go into a little bit of power here um, because I know I can afford to. But uh, foremost, what you wanna do is you wanna stay away from that left rough and just get it up here far enough now, if you haven't seen my video, I do want you guys to keep in mind, um, I made a mistake on this hole uh, the last time I had a pitch. I got a tailwind, and you got to be careful of your tailwinds. I knew, you know, I knew that it was going to probably happen. I tried to correct for it. I still didn't correct enough. So if you guys haven't seen all my revisions for this hole yet, uh, you might want to search for that one. Um, or if we get a tailwind here, you know, I'll try my best to, uh, you know, put in a revision for you guys. But anytime that you're moving to a lower target, it is going to change the way that you need to play rings severely. So, and this kind of applies. This shot here does apply because I'm going to need to move my ball into the bunker in order to get this adjustment. So what you need to do is make sure that you're underplaying your rings because I'm moving to a lower target. So if I'm at max and would usually go 10 rings, I can't go 10 rings anymore because it's not gonna play 10 rings, for example. So I need to come in from my max ring adjustment. Um, for me, it's not 10 rings. It's probably more like seven some, but I'm only gonna go six some for my adjustment because of that overplay factor that I'm mentioning. And there you can see I did almost have it probably pretty spot on. You could see the landing zone was very similar to where I set up. Um, I was being just a little bit cautious. But keep in mind that you do got to do a little bit of an underplay when you move it to a lower elevation. It will not apply. It, it, wouldn't, it won't apply if it's a headwind or a straight side wind where you're not moving to a lower spot on the green. But if you're moving into the bunker there, you need to be extremely careful because the wind will underplay. And you're kind of seeing my opponent do that right now, and you're seeing what happens as a result. So I'm assuming that, well, I'm gonna hope that he can make it because I don't wanna just give him the stroke and then have him beat me. It is the rough, 
Uh, it is a little bit easier to make it in the rough, but I'm really hoping that he does make it so we can get to the playoff for you guys. Uh, had I been going second, you know, I could have eliminated this altogether. And if he missed, I could have just missed. But, uh, you know, let's hope that he can knock this in here. Um, what I would recommend for you guys is trying to put it onto the green, kind of kind of similarly to what my opponent's doing here. Um, you know, I would put it right where he's about to put it, right there. And just, you know, don't short hit it. See, it makes no sense to put it right where he just did and then short hit it because then what if it took that other bounce where it was short? But he still got it anyway. Um, good to go. But just be careful because you could see that ball guide scooting across the green. And when you short hit it, like, you might have just put it right onto that short hit range. So something to be careful of. As you can see here, we are getting, uh, unfortunately, the old hole. And, uh, you know, in terms of what I need to do, you know, I'll put it on the island. Um, you know, you guys do have plenty of island shots. That's the only reason that I've been kind of going away from this. It's because you really don't need to see additional shots of this. But I will do it here because I do think that the, uh, you know, wind... Uh, you know, just seeing a few guardian shots. Now, I usually do go a little bit more towards max in this in, in this case. So max for me here is going to be seven rings. So you're going to see me probably play max here. And there you see perfect ball. You know, keep in mind if you have a side wind, you're going to need to have some kind of counter ring method. So you see me playing the side spin to the right to kind of counter the effects. But you can see that it does anytime that you pull up towards max anytime you pull up towards max that you're going to need to uh you know definitely pull your target long i only use five backspin there which would usually run out past the hole maybe four yards but since it's into the wind that ball guide's going to compress and similarly with the way how it's angled to the left if you don't side spin it over to the right to counter for that you're never going to be able to get it where you need it. So you got to keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that my guardian might not be like your guardian. I My max is 1.2 per ring. If your max is 1.6 per ring or 1.7, whatever it is, you need to play your max number, not mine. So that's why I use terms like max for you guys. But, uh, you know, good luck with that hole. And... Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.